In a world where the paranormal is just a breath away, we're expanding the globe to bring you the best in paranormal news. This is the Week in Weird. Hello and welcome to the Week in Weird. Our first story takes us to Cresswell Crags in sunny Worksop, England. Hundreds of witches' marks have been discovered carved into caves on the border between Nottinghamshire and Derbyshire. The marks were previously thought to have been graffiti, but experts say they're actually intended to stop evil spirits. The most common marks found in the caves are double V etchings, thought to refer to Mary, the Virgin of Virgins. But there are also lines, mazes, and boxes, all intended to capture or trap evil. Hundreds of the marks were found in just one of the caves. A particularly large grouping were carved around a four-foot round hole that seems to warn of an entrance to hell. Duncan Wilson, chief executive of Historic England said, and I quote, Truly, we can only speculate on what the people of Crestwell feared might emerge from these caves. The people who made the marks may have thought the big hole was some kind of door to the underworld, or perhaps even a demon prison. And they were certainly most worried about just what was going to come out of it. Tours of the caves containing the witch's marks started for the first time in late February. To me, it clearly sounds like they're dealing with a portal. And when it comes to portals, the only two people that I trust to adequately probe my portal would be John Tenney and that other guy on Ghost Stalkers, my favorite paranormal show. Maybe there'll be another season. Ghost Stalkers International it has a nice ring to it. And now, it's time for Cryptid Corner. Cryptid Corner, Cryptid Corner, Cryptid Corner. If you're like me, when you think of the one person you'd like to go searching for Bigfoot with, you don't think of Josh Gates or Matt Moneymaker or even Lauren Coleman. You think of Jose Canseco. And you're in luck. Because according to a recent tweet, the former Major League slugger is now offering to take you on a Bigfoot excursion with his alien buddies. When you call the phone number listed in the tweet, you're told via text message that for a mere $5,000 cash, you can travel with Jose and his alien friend in his custom RV to proven Bigfoot habitats. And while you're camping out in the wild on your search, you just might meet a real Bigfoot. Because according to the text, you never know what's going to happen with Mr. Canseco. How very true. But you better hurry though, only five lucky people will get to go on the trip and it's selling out fast. And that sadly is Cryptid Corner for this week. That sucked. I know. Cryptid Corner, Cryptid Corner, Cryptid Corner. Our last story is really weird. How weird is it? It's so weird that Florida's vice grip on weirdness in America may be given a run for its money. The Delaware State Police are on the lookout for a man who approaches unsuspecting people at Wilmington area gas stations and politely asks them for gas money in exchange for meat. So far, no harm has come from any of the meat man's suspicious behavior or of request. When Jeffrey Brannock was approached by the meat man, he said that he agreed to put 20 bucks worth of gas into the man's car, and once he did, he walked away with some meat. He said, I really didn't need the meat, especially from a stranger at a gas station, but he popped open a cooler and gave me a couple pork chops and some steak and then some sausage. Brennick said that the meat man just looked like an average guy and he saw no reason not to help him out. But another of the meat man's bartering partners isn't so sure. William Nice said that during his encounter, there was a sense that it might just be better to take the meat deal than to refuse. And so he took the deal. There have been reports on social media about several encounters with the meat man. And while the state police say they've identified him, they did not say whether or not they believe he's dangerous. They're asking anyone with information to call 302-633-5000. And that's it for this week's installment of The Week in Weird. I'm your host, Matt Bleistein, and I'll see you next time.